you. Thank you all for being here. Darko, thanks a ton for inviting me. Um, it's a super pleasure to meet you all. Just next time, please host the party after the second day, not the first one. Anyway, I'll be the guy with the <laughs> worst slides ever, talking about the creator economy and how that is impacting traditional businesses, creator-led brands, and the, and the future of uh, B2C, and why this mattered to you. So, <laughs> in the next 13 minutes, we're gonna talk about the creator economy, how is it built, why does it matter, and most important, your questions. I really, really wanna answer anything that you might have. So please, please grab the slido.com, hashtag allwebmk, and uh, please have questions. Anyway, what is the creator economy? Well, the simple thing is business is built around millions of independent content creators. That's what it is. On this graph right here that's provided by Stripe, that's the growth of how many independent content creators are there in the world right now. And you can see that from 2017 or something like that, the number almost doubles every single year. In fact, when I was growing up, probably <laughs> the same for all of you as well, I wanted to be an astronaut. So the same thing is happening in China right now. However, in UK, US, and most of the Western countries, now kids want to become YouTubers. So that's like the number one job position that they want to have. So that means that the creator economy is really, really just getting started. Those are some, some numbers there from 2020. This thing almost doubled in 2021. The pandemic helped, but the numbers keep doubling every single year. Now, what is a creator? When I'm talking about creators, I don't mean typical just influencers, and we're going to see that on the rest of the slides, but I'm talking about people that are creating content and have an audience regardless of the size. So content creators can be found on YouTube, on Twitch, on certain blog posts, on, on Substack, uh, Facebook, everywhere where, where you can create contents. And there, there are tons of platforms out there that allow you to do that. And this is the OG creator, and this is the guy that started the creator economy movement. And here's why. Back in, I can't remember the year, but Nike did a brand with Michael Jordan called Jordans. This was the first, it's not a brand deal, but a first creator-led brand. This obviously exploded, and it kind of opened the door a little bit to everything that, that, that is happening right now, and it, in my opinion, will continue to happen in the future. So, we're gonna go through the stages of the creator economy and how we ended up being here. So the stage one is, you create, they make money. And uh, we obviously went through this in the early like 2008, 2009, 2007, and so on, where we were posting content on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, mostly for the likes, to be funny, to have support from your friends, so on and so forth. Nobody thought that this will become a job position, let alone that uh, creators will become very, very important in the world that we live in right now. So we had the chocolate rains, we had the <laughs> leave Britney alone videos, and every <laughs> all other videos or posts that became viral during that time. Now, this is stage one. The f what happened here in stage one is that brands started realizing, and not just brands, everyone started realizing, they have this unique attention. What I mean by unique attention is that it's not just an ad right now. So you're not seeing it while you're watching a show, then you get interrupted by whatever the ad is, but we have people creating content and they're gathering the attention of the masses. So TV, radio, they became sad because now the eyeballs were on the platforms where people were creating content. Now, this is, uh, for example, the TikTok video is, uh, the TikTok girl is Charlie D'Amelio, one of the famous TikTok stars, uh, brand deal with Dunkin' Donuts. And then Ronaldo, <laughs> actually, oddly enough, and the irony of it uh, is that he did a brand deal with KFC and Herbalife, which is, Funny. But what happened here was that people started to monetize it, mon uh, started monetizing influencer reach. And that was a very, very powerful thing. And it led the industry in a sort of a different way where we now we take it for granted. We know that it, it exists. But it wasn't like that back in the day. So what happened was that this, these people started getting brand deals, which means that they started getting more money, 
which means they became increasingly important for the economy. And uh, as you can see here, just judging by the numbers, they really, really started monetizing inf influencer reach. So the amount of budget spent went from 1.7 billion in 2016 to 16.4 in 2022, on track to be 18 point something in 2023. So they really started monetizing influencer reach. However, the stage three is where the lines get kind of blurry. So we're talking about creators versus influencers. And what's the difference between both of them? Well, uh, influencers create content to convince their followers to make a decision around a certain product. Content creators do sort of an educational content. We're going back to one of the previous slides where I talk about that you only need a thousand true fans in order to be a creator. Now, the reason why it started getting blurry is because creators realized that, hey, why take a hundred bucks from a brand to promote Dunkin' Donuts where I can make something and really trying to squeeze the, the, the benefits of my audience. So not just getting paid, they, start, they stopped being billboards and they went to creators as businesses. This opened up the floodgates for creator economy startups. And by creator economy startups, I mean a lot of companies trying to do community management, content creation, uh, on-platform monetization, off-platform monetization, audience growth, engagement, so on and so forth. So in my opinion, the two things that you need for your startup or company to be successful, or sorry, that you can leverage to be successful, is either code or media. So you're either, you're building an amazing product and you can leverage and scale code, or you can leverage and scale media. Now, what happened in the creator economy was they outsourced the code and they focused only on media because that's what matters. That's why these people are building audience is because they want to focus on media attention, sorry, attention, <laughs> and they're outsourcing the code. So for example, Startups like Linktree, which is valued at 1.3 billion, and it's a simple linking bio tool where uh, Instagram allows you to have one link on your page, they allowed creators to put multiple links in their Linktree page. Sounds simple, and it is. However, it led to creators having a presence on their own and guiding people from multiple different platforms onto whatever they choose. Patreon is where you can monetize your community, for example. You can charge for certain posts or anything that you feel of value. Very valuable for, for creators. Cameo, you can pay a celebrity to have a video for, I don't know, a birthday, whatever it might be. Pietra allows creators to have their own e-commerce brand. So Pietra is basically doing everything. So sourcing from China, having a website, all of that. And for 30 bucks, if you're a creator and you have the attention of the people, you can create your e-commerce brand in literally a day. Willa manages payments, OnlyFans, I don't, I don't know what it does, uh, it's just, uh, I've, I've heard that it's a platform that helps creators. Um, millions of them, by the way, millions. Anyway, these are the venture deals in the last year. So just in the last year, look how much money the creator economy raised. We have Kajabi, Spotter, all valued at billions and billions of dollars. And by the way, the companies that are in bold actually work with us, so super proud of that as well. So, to recap, <laughs> no, <laughs> to recap, and thanks for the team, to recap, we have three stages of the creator stack, which are follower acquisition and growth, which are the typical platforms like YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitch, so on and so forth. We have platforms that are for deepening uh, engagement and retention, Linktree, ConvertKit, Revu, so on and so forth, and monetization, Patreon, OnlyFans, Substack. So that's the typical creator stack right now. But why does this matter to you? If you're not a content creator, why does this matter to you? Well, you used to pay them for posts. Now they're taking your market share. And that's, and that's a very, very good thing. Like for example, Skin by Kim, which is a skincare brand by Kim Kardashian or the sisters, I don't know, but I know it's from Kim. She went from zero to $1.8 billion valuation in a little bit more than a year. Think about how insane that is. Like the, the beauty industry is they'll, they'll kill you if you get their, 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 their shelf space. But just by having her brand and working as a creator and having that big of an audience, she managed to go from zero to 1.8 billion. And it's the same thing happening all over the world. Like we have 
Emma doing coffee. We have Emrata doing swimmer, uh, swimmer brands. And Mr. Beast having the biggest restaurant opening in history. So again, think about how crazy that is. Like we have a guy that is recording YouTube videos and managing to have a restaurant, so opening up a restaurant and having the biggest restaurant open in history. 10,000 people managed to get in, 100,000 people waited outside. Crazy. So, but it's not only that. So before that, he tried with, so not tried, actually succeeded, with chocolate bars, Feastables, and it became the number one chocolate brand in America. Again, think about how crazy that is. And not only that it's crazy, let's go back to this. Not only that it's crazy, it's crazy the fact that, as I know that most of you are marketers, this is managed with zero dollars in ad spend. Now, if, 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 if it was crazy for just a creator to have the number one uh, chocolate brand in America, imagine doing that with zero dollars in ad spend. And I keep talking about this over and over again, like what's harder, to make a better burger or to build an audience of millions of people? And it's the second thing, building an audience of millions of people. Uh, and we have some fails here. So for example, QB was an app that uh, wanted to monetize short form content for Hollywood type sort of folks. Now, they got a lot of big, big, big actors in it. $1.75 billion invested in the company failed within six months. Why? Because nobody cared about Hollywood stars watching short-form content from them. They cared about their YouTube celebrities, their TikTok, their Instagram influencers, and so on. And ESPN, just recently, I think it was like three days ago, they decided we are shit at what we're doing in order to gather the attention of Everyone, we need to hire content creators. So they finally understood that the guys talking about sports are way, way more boring than some people that have a podcast about sports and are really getting into it because they love what they're doing. So what ESPN did, fired everyone or reassigned them and hired content creators to be, to be leading, leading voices of ESPN. Crazy. But is this the end of traditional businesses? Not right now, but I think in like 10, 20, 30 years, definitely. I don't think any business can survive by either not learning how to be great content creators or hiring a great content creator. So can Feastables beat Hershey's? Yes, yes, it's number one chocolate bear in America right now. I don't see a reason why it would continue to be so. And, and this is, a passion of mine, <laughs> I think the distribution matters a lot more than product. So if you have the distribution, you will eventually, hopefully, <laughs> build a good product. I'm not saying that you don't need a good product. I'm just saying that distribution matters more than product, especially, especially if the cost of distribution is zero. So the solution to this, for anyone who's trying to target B2C, or pretty much anyone, I mean, B2B will be in there in a, in, in, a, in a while, get content creators on your cap, cap table. So either get them to work with you, give them equity, give them whatever you need to give them, just get creators on your cap table, or learn how to do content yourself. This is a great tweet from, from Naval, by the way, he's the, he's the CEO uh, and founder of AngelList, is that eventually everyone will be in the creator economy, and I really, really think that's, that's, that's what's gonna happen. So, that's all. As I said in the beginning, I love questions. The, smart, the smartest people are those who ask questions, so please do. And before we get into the Q&A, just, we have a creator brand right here, so this was added recently. <laughs> so congrats on, con congrats on doing that, and I love to see that happening in Macedonia. So good luck.